Secondly, participation brings contamination. I'm going to talk about that a lot this morning. Did you know that there are things those Christians could participate in that contaminated them? Verse 20, I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. By your participation with demons, you get contaminated. Now, a lot of us go, Phew. we don't have any idols around here, right? We don't have any demons in Tulsa, do we? I mean, there's no temple to some bull god somewhere where they're cutting up animals and squirting blood around and, and offering them to demons, right? Phew. Boy, we don't have any problem with that. Well, that's not true. Fully. I don't think they're killing animals around here to demons these days other than some wacko occultic groups off in the fringes where they find cows out in the pasture or in the range that are drained of their blood and their hearts are gone. I mean, they do find that, but that's not the norm. But what could we participate in? Look at verse 21 of 1 Corinthians 10, because the third principle, not only can sometimes a perilous activity appear safe initially, and, and if we participate in one of these perilous activities, it contaminates us, but the bottom line of this text is that contact with demons will break our communion with Christ. And so the teaching of this passage is in this place, in that time, it was wrong for them to go into the temples where the demons were being placated by the offerings of sacrifices. That's what the interpretation of this text is. But how does it apply to us today? Well, the application which is powerful to us is that contact with demons of any kind breaks our communion with Christ. That's what it says in verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord, the Lord's table, and the cup of demons, participating with demons in any fashion or form. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. That's how we understand what Paul's saying. Because the table of the demons was the sacrificial dinner in the temple. And it was free. You talk about a great meal. As I said, the freshest, nicest meat offered inside the temple, they would have a sacrificial dinner to those gods. And those Christians who formerly had been involved in those orgies and those dinners to the idols... Once they got saved, they said, oh, idols are nothing. I can go back and eat there. And Paul says, no, you can't. He says, don't go so far as to be examining the label on everybody's dinner meat and see if it's from the temple, because he said, that's not the problem. The problem is, don't partake with demons in any form. Don't partake in their sacrifices. Don't partake in the sacrificial dinners. And don't have any contact with them. Well, what is contact with demon? How does that happen? We'll turn to Ephesians 4 now for just a moment. Ephesians 4. I want to show you something very interesting that a lot of us uh, maybe need to be reminded of in our personal lives. It says in Ephesians 4 that the way we have contact with demons, and contact with demons, remember, breaks our communion with Christ. It doesn't make us lost. It doesn't make us lose our salvation. It ruins our fellowship with Christ. It, it separates us from that joy of communing with him. It causes us to be in disobedience to him. How does that happen? Well, it says in Ephesians 4, 26, be angry and do not sin. Well, that's a paradoxical statement, isn't it? Be angry and don't sin. And it continues. Nor, or don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Verse 27, here's the key. Nor give place to the devil. I want to talk to you about two things, ground and hold. We can give ground to the devil, and we can allow him to get a hold on our lives. A ground is defined this way. Demons need a place of entrance to get into our lives. The ground has been defined as, and, and this is what uh, writers over the years that have studied the occult and, and demon influence on Christians, anything that gives an advantage to Satan in our lives. Now, how does the Bible define that? Well, an opportunity for the devil and demons to, to influence us are, in this text, uncontrolled anger. You know, there are people, they say, oh, I lost my temper. They didn't lose their temper. They found it, and they have done nothing to get rid of it. And a person who has rage and uncontrolled anger, it says in verse 27 of Ephesians, has given a foothold, a beachhead. They've given an entrance for Satan to come in and influence their life. How many people have said things in anger that they would never say? 
they would never want to say. They would be so stricken. But in the fury of the moment, in the rage, they say things that are critical and destructive and, and totally damaging. I mean, how many people have regretted forever the last words they said, perhaps to others that they were in fellowship with in the church, when they disagree with them and they went, and they storm out. And a thousand times they wish they could take those back. How about to a child or to a partner in marriage? When you're angry and you say, when we have uncontrolled anger, we have given ground. We have given a place for the devil and his minions to come into our lives and to hinder us. The scriptures also say disobedience opens the door. When we directly disobey uh, the scriptures, lust, uncontrolled desire, opens the door to Satan. Uh, sensuality, in fact, uh, a lady who, who examined the great revival, the Welsh revival in 1904, in that period of time, wrote a book called War on the Saints. And what she did is she came in behind the revival and looked at what caused the revival to diminish and end. And, and her book is a monumental book. It's called War on the Saints. And this is what she says, Mrs. Jesse Penn Lewis. This ground needs to be discovered. It needs to be confessed to God as sin. And then it needs to be turned from in the name of Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk about some of the grounds. I'm going to show you some of the scriptures. But once a demon gains an entrance, he will have to maintain a hold within the person if he's to continue. And that means if we don't confess and forsake and get cleansed of the anger, the lust, the sensuality, or the occultic contact we have through going, as they did, to temples, to demons, if we don't forsake that, then there is a perpetual influence on our lives by those demons. What's that influence like? It's a dampening of us spiritually. It's, it's an insatiable desire to do things we know is not right. It is the, that horrible fear. It's that horrible anger. It's that horrible clutching desire that just grips us. The demons are seeking and Satan is seeking for us to give him ground so that he can get a hold on our lives. 